One of the features in Service Manager is the ability to do incident management. We have multiple ways to create incidents in Service Manager. An end user can go to the self-service portal and submit an incident through the self-service portal. They can send an email to Service Manager and it will automatically create an incident where it will take the title of the email, make it the subject of the incident. It will take the body of the email, make it the description of the incident. It will take any attachments, attach those to the incident, set the affected user as the person that submitted the incident. An end user can also call in and say, hey, I'm having a problem. And the analyst can then take the incident information from the end user. For analysts, they can either use the Service Manager console, which is the Windows-based console that I have here, or there's also a console from a partner called GridPro that provides a web-based console that they can use as well. In the Service Manager console, I can go to the Work Items workspace, and I can then go to the Incident Management section, and I have different views into all of my incidents. So I have a view here that shows me all the open incidents, or I could see all closed or all incidents. I can create custom views that allow me to drill down to just see the incidents that I care about. And when a user calls in and says that they want to create a new incident, then I can just click the Create Incident link. And this will open up a new incident form that I can fill out. And if we look at the new incident form, very briefly, it has multiple tabs that we can use to gather information around our incident. So we, this incident forms in our demo environment. So we've extended this incident form, which is a good thing to point out, that you can extend the form to contain specific fields that you care about. But on the main tab, we have the ability to capture who the affected user is. You can just start typing the user's name and their name will appear because it pulls it out of the CMDB. We can capture the title, the description. We have a classification category section where we can capture what type of incident this is. The drop down here, as in all drop downs, are configurable so you, and nestable, so you can have multiple nested items. So we can capture the classification category. We capture the impact and the urgency. Impact and the urgency define the priority of your incident per ITIL best practices. We can assign incidents to a support group. So you may have multiple support groups in your organization, and you can assign incidents to the, to the appropriate support group. You can assign an incident to a specific person as well. And incidents can have a primary owner. If we move down this form, we're able to see that we can specify the business service that's affected by this incident or the specific configuration items affected by this incident, as well as um, we have an action log where we can have public and private comments around what's being done to resolve this incident. The Activities tab is where we can specify different tasks or manual activities that need to be done. So we can add manual activities onto this incident that allow you to break the incident up into discrete chunks and you can assign each activity to a specific person that needs to work them. The Related Items tab is going to show me any work items that this incident might be related to or configuration items or knowledge base articles. Again, Service Manager has this concept of interconnectedness, of having all of the items in Service Manager related to each other so that you get better holistic reporting out of it. We can capture resolution information. We have service level agreement information, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And of course, we have the history tab that tracks all the changes related to the incident anytime anyone makes a change. And on the right-hand side, we have a link all the different tasks that are available on this for this particular incident. If we go back to the general tab, you'll notice there's an escalated checkbox down here. What happens when that checkbox gets escalated? Well, that's up to you. That's part of the beauty of Service Manager is your ability to build in your own process. So you have the ability to build workflows that maybe when that this incident is escalated, you automatically reassign it to a different support group.
So back on the general tab, you'll notice we have an escalated checkbox. Now what happens when you escalate an instant? It's up to you. That's part of the beauty of Service Manager, the ability to define your process. So there's wizards in Service Manager that allow you to build different workflows. So maybe when this instance is escalated, you automatically assign it to a different support group um, and change the impact and the urgency, and you send out a bunch of notifications to different people. You can build all of these things into Service Manager. So you can take your process and implement it in Service Manager through the use of these built-in wizards and these workflows.